Torn and Frayed are just another kind of Grey's Anatomy episode. This is actually probably the most Grey's Anatomy close episode we ever got on this show. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 10 of Supernatural Season 8. And this is the one that I actually feel this should have been the mid-season finale. Because it ends on such a good note with a bunch of different things. Yes, the brothers were at odds after the last episode. Benny was kind of like, uh, like, what have I done? But then how this one goes, the Benny storyline kind of just doesn't really come to anything. You don't even know if he actually ate any of Nar Martin, just ran away. But... The whole dynamic with Castiel and the kind of weird uh, Clockwork Orange that's going on with him as well as uh, Wiener Boy, pretty crazy. And I'm actually amazed that they were able to get away with what they do to him in this episode. Crowley and him just like using the tools that I know it's meant for lobotomy and whatnot. But honestly, because we're getting so close to Christmas, I, it's making me or at this point will we be past Christmas. We might be past Christmas at this point. It makes me think about the tools you need to use to get the tree into place, depending on the kind of the base you have, but that's what it's making me think of. There is a lot going on in this episode, both with Castiel trying to figure out who's in here, the whole conspiracy with him and Naomi, Crowley getting more and more details about what his initial thoughts were, learning that there is in fact an angel tablet. I've got to really take out that note of what I know about future angels because the idea of just Keeping angels in heaven isn't the worst idea, really, truly speaking. And then Sam and Melia. This is actually such a sad ending to that story. Now, I understand that it's not anything supernatural in terms of what we're used to. Like, nothing supernatural happens to them. She doesn't get caught up in anything supernatural. It is literally just a girl and a boy relationship between her and Sam. And I liked it. I think it's because it's the best one the Supernatural's done in a while. The one with Lisa and Dean was fucking awful in comparison. I know that this relationship was a very big divergence from what the normal theme of the show is, but it just was put together well. I liked the relationship between the two, and I especially liked how it came to this conclusion with him coming back to her, them ha having a night together, and then what she says. One of us will be here, and we'll know. Neither of us will be here, and we'll know. Or both of us will be here, and we'll know. And I liked how it came to the conclusion at the end, where she came back. She was going to come back for him, and Sam realizes that there's something bigger at stake. I don't really think the whole angel tablet is the biggest reason, but it's the fact that Crowley is malevolent, he's found out something that could help his party, and Castiel is clearly in trouble. So that's why he decides to put things aside and work with his brother again. While that choice might seem a little bit odd at first, I think Sam is doing the greater good, it does again lead into what's going to happen with this season with the uh, the, chal uh, the the trials, the demon tablet trials, if I'm correct. So I actually liked how this episode came to an end as much as it actually kind of saddened me to watch. And then with Benny too, I think that they realize that they can't really do much else with him. And I know that's going to happen later on this season, but they've realized that they've just run out. The fact that he's like, yo, Dean, can you crumb across the whole country? I'm not doing too well. Maybe we can have a cup of coffee. It's like, bro, you both have a fucking car. Meet halfway. Jesus Christ. Dean has to set him aside too because he's got bigger things at play and he realizes that he cannot put this vampire for his brother even though this guy was so helpful to him overall torn and freight is a very cool setup it adds on to the plot that was already kind of small being the demon tablet with castiel and whatever the fuck naomi's doing to him it is adding more intrigue is it doing it slowly Yes, but is it doing it far better in terms of just structural wise than season seven? Yeah, maybe season seven had more better episodes, like really like standout episodes. Yeah, oh, that actually, I should confirm before I say that. That's a very large assumption on my part, so I should just check my list. Okay, we had more fives by this point. And we also had a seven. Overall, the average of the season is pretty much the same, but... Eh. I don't know, it's still kind of just okay to me. Overall, the season is still okay, and that's kind of leading into why I think this is a 
better than average episode. So I'm going to give Torn and Frayed a 5 out of 7. I like the setup. I like where it's going. Found a very saddening but uh, well-written conclusion to Amelia and Sam. And I know she comes back one more time. It's either in the next season or season 10. But that's it. That's the ending of Amelia. And it's sad and it hurts. And it's Sam's story all over again. It's the Winchester story. But those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's see what you guys had to say. This episode, as well as one coming up this season, reminds me of a more cutthroat time in Supernatural history when the show really still tried to make the audience uncomfortable with nail-biting scenarios that felt straight out of horror movie. The torture scene for Alfie... The angel was merciless and still hard to watch yeah as they were 10 years ago yeah I, like i said I, i'm very amazed they were able to get past the censors with what they did the conflict between the brothers reaches an end as both men sacrifice someone they love for the continued hunting this actually hurt to watch as you feel bad for the bros as well as amelia and especially benny at least from the point on the brothers are able to heal their relationship although reminders of their mutual hurt will creep in on later on in the season I felt like this episode was partially written due to add the villainy of Crowley, so fans would be more driven to see him ultimately fail and be killed off, which I think would have been his fate if the show hadn't been renewed for another season. Yeah, they were trying to set up Crowley as a villain around this time. This is also when Mark Shepard even talks about, like, this is the last time his character, he felt like his character was worth something, like, meant something. And then Crowley's remark about having given his scientists every torture device possible, save the Neil Diamond album, has really stuck with me all these years. Every time a Neil Diamond song comes on <laughs> unintentionally, that would be pretty funny. Castiel is a villainous character again against his will this time. is a scenario that always produces anxiety because of his sheer power in relation to the Winchesters. I like at least that they are ahead of the game a little and know something is off. Yeah, I like that too. I like how they're not just like dumb in this, like, oh, what happened to Castiel? Like they actually know that there is something off and that it is further towards their reasoning for breaking their relationships off with the people who have kind of pulled them away from each other. Torn and Freight is a great way to describe Sam and Dean's relationship currently in Season 8. I love that the first 11 episodes focus on the brothers' dynamic towards each other. So did I. I actually did like that. It, it didn't kind of feel like it was a full plate, but it was a decent like appetizer I guess you'd say a very long appetizer a great way to confirm that there are tablets for the angels I love how dealing with monster themed episodes of season six and seven make eight make demons and, and angels interesting again I love how the episode brings the brothers back together again Sam realizes the big picture is too important to ignore and he leaves Amelia for good and it's heartbreaking to see Dean cut off Benny this episode was good not surprised that Dean and Sam are at odds with each other due to what happened I was relieved that the Amelia storyline finally came to an end, uh, to a conclusion in this episode. Both Dean and Amelia were right to tell Sam to choose. He can't have half in and half out. I'm really glad that Castiel fo forced Sam and Dean to put the drama aside to help him rescue an angel. I'm not surprised that Kevin is so focused on the tablet that he stopped having a life and pushed his mother away. I felt bad for Castiel when Naomi forces him to deal with the fellow angel. Yeah, that was a pretty, like, woof. That was dark. Castiel's story arc with Naomi is getting good as the season goes on. I don't like how Dean was willing to abandon Benny after all they had been through. I will not miss Amelia, though, as she was never well-written. Yeah, okay, the second part is you never really fit in with the show. I can kind of see what you mean there in terms of the theme, but I thought that her whole arc was actually very well done for being in this show. I think that the drop the attraction and the reason why they were together made sense and like i said out of all the relationships this show has had aside from heart which again is another sam related relationship i feel that this was the one that made the most sense i know there would be one for sam again later on but they handled that so poorly and they didn't even finish with it but you you know what i mean i finally caught up to the rewatch and boy this season is exactly as mid as i remember although things are slightly picking up I'm still annoyed Sam never said, hey, maybe it was fucked for me to be bringing a mentally unwell man to watch over truer blood, or Dean being proud to admit that maybe he was wrong to kill Sam's friend. Instead, they get a stalemate where Dean just leaves Benny high and dry, and Sam never fits fault. Great. I miss Bobby knocking some sense into these numbskulls. Also, uh, Amelia kept reminding me of Ar Arabelle Raphael. But maybe that's just my damage. I don't actually know what you mean by the end bit here. But yeah, no, missing Bobby. Yeah, the fact that both of these two have a big, like, chip of, yeah, we should have done a better uh, decision there kind of guilt on their shoulders. 
it does definitely weigh on it. All right, guys, those are your thoughts. Thank you guys again for those. Now we're going on to LARP and the Real Girl. This is the first really funny episode of the season, so I'm looking forward to that. I know we had Southern Comfort, but that was kind of corny. This one will be a different kind of corny, I guess. But give me your guys' thoughts about that episode in the comments below, and I'll make sure to read those off in the next review. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I think we're going to go into the new year now, if I'm correct, if we haven't already. Um, I'm doing all of these in October, so, and I guess we're going to find out how the next episode is. So I'll see you guys next week.